Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this lecture, I'll be talking about view model patterns. I recently wrote an article on my blog adamsharp.github.io in which I discuss different kind of view model patterns that you'll be looking at when you're building Surf UI applications if you're using MVVM design pattern. So you may come across these different patterns and this is not really the official name of the pattern like screen view model and state view model and all those things. But I think this is this can be used uh, in many different applications when they're using MVVM design pattern. So let's go ahead and talk about these different patterns. The first one for the view model patterns you'll see is something called a screen view model. Now a screen view model represents an entire screen. This means that if you're building a to-do list application and you want to represent the list of items, the task items, then you will create a separate view model, a parent view model, that will represent everything that goes on that particular screen. And you will represent that by using a screen view model. So this will be called a task list view model. Let's go ahead and check it out what the implementation looks like. Here's a simple implementation of a screen view model. This is called the task list view model and it can also have behavior like adding a task and deleting a task. You can see that right now we don't really have an array of tasks I'm going to show you later but this task list view model is going to be serving as the main parent view model for our task list screen. So if content view is where I want to display all the list of tasks, then I'm going to go ahead and create an observed object, private var, and I will call it task list view model, and I will simply use my task list view model in that case. And that particular view model is going to be controlling the complete screen, which displays a list of tasks. Now there is also a possibility, not probably in the task, displaying the task point of view, but maybe you are working on an app that will display the top portion might be the list of stocks and the bottom portion might be a list of news associated with the stocks. So in those cases, you can have one parent view model, which can have multiple child view models. So a parent view model can be like home list view model or home view model that can have child view model like stock list view model, news list view model, and so on. That's a little bit more complicated, but you can definitely achieve those kind of results by creating a view model per screen of your app. And those view models can contain some other models. Let's move to the next pattern for our view models. If you have been following my channel, you may have already seen a lot of different examples of read-only view models. Read-only view models are, just as the name say, they are just used to display the information and that's it. You cannot really change any information, although you can use the parent of the read-only view model to change the information if you want, but the whole purpose of the read-only view model is to just give the data to the view. Sometimes the read-only view model can also format the data a little bit. That's perfectly fine. That's actually the job of view model to accommodate the view. But read-only view models, they're simply providing the data to the view and doing nothing else. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a read-only view model. So back to the task list view model, you can see that right now the task list view model doesn't really have any way to provide the task to the view. So what we will do is we can go ahead and create a task view model and this task view model, the only job of this task view model is to take in a model, which is a task model, and to expose the properties that can be used by the view to display the information. So this means that we can have a task model, which I've already created. The task model just have the title and the priority. And in order to create the task view model, you have to pass in the task. Once you have that, we can go ahead and create a property, let's say a title, and we can return the title, which is task.title. 
we can also go ahead and create a priority or any other property that we want. And we can say task.priority. Okay. So this will be a task view model. We should also make this kind of like a private so that it's not available to the outside world. And the only way to access the data is by title and priority. Later on, the task list view model is going to be containing the array called task, which will be an array of task view model. So this will be populated eventually when we call like get all tasks. And once we populate this, then we can display it on the screen. So this is the whole idea of using read only view model. So in this case, this is a read only view model. You can't really do anything with it because this is just providing the data. Now, in certain cases, if you, if the view is saying that, hey, the title of the task has to be uppercase because capital letters always, then this actually give us a little bit more flexibility that we can accommodate the view. So the view model can then change it to uppercase, change the format. And now when the view displays the title, it will always be in uppercase. The other things can be, maybe we're displaying some sort of a dollar amount. We can go ahead and round it up to, or make it nice on the display as a money value or with dollar sign and all that stuff that the task view model or some sort of a view model can do. So this is our read-only view model whose only job task is to simply provide the data to the view. The parent view model in this case, the task list view model is going to contain an array of task view model which will define every single task and that is how it will get displayed on the screen. Now let's move to the last pattern which is the view state. The purpose of view state view model is to take in the information from the view and put it in the view model itself. Now, obviously we can expose some state properties in our like a parent view model and we can expose that and we can utilize that, but this can end up being hundreds and hundreds of state properties. So let's go ahead and see that how we can utilize the view state view model pattern. All right, so let's say that we have a very simple screen which takes in two different set of information, a text field for a title and a text field for priority, right? Every time we write something in the text field, it is going to go into our title property, which is marked with state. Every time we write in the priority text field, it is going to go into the priority state field, which is perfectly fine. I mean, it's going to work just fine. But what happens if we start adding more and more and more text fields? We start adding more and more and more state variables. And the view state view model pattern allows us to simplify that. Now, right now, we only have two couple of different things, right? Let's say that I add one more or a couple of different more. Let's say that I'm saying, oh, the person can also enter a name for some reason. So I can go ahead and enter a name, right? And for some reason, the person can also enter the age or assign to, assign to, and we can go ahead and create assign to, and maybe instead of name, we can just say date, I guess, and dollar sign and date. Now I have to create two more properties to accommodate the date and the assign to, which is not a big deal because I can simply go over here and create quickly, create these properties like assign to, and I can quickly create another property called date and it will work just fine. Now, obviously the problem is that if I have a little bit more longer form, then I will have to add more and more properties. A different way will be to use a view state view model pattern. So if I go over here or any other file, I will create a different view state. So let's say task view state. You can even create the state a little bit more narrowed down version. You can actually call it add task view state. 
because you might have a completely different view state for updating a task. It all depends of, on your scenario. I'm just going to call it task view state. And in the task view state, I'm going to expose a couple of different properties that I want to capture. So if you go to the content view, these are the different properties that we're trying to capture. Priority, title, assign to, and date. All right, so let's go ahead and add those properties. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead and create a title property, which will be a string. I will create a priority string assign to string and date which is also string. Basically, everything is coming from the text field. It has to be string to be bindable. And then later on, we can change that. Okay, so now we can go back to content view. And instead of defining all of these different properties, we are simply going to define one single property and we will call it task view state or anything like that. And I will go ahead and create a task view state. This is where we will hold the view state for the task. And now I can go ahead with the binding. So I can say over here, task view state dot title, task view state, you get the idea now, task view state dot priority, and task view state, and so on. So task view state dot assign to, and task view state dot date. So now you can see that we don't really need all of those properties over here. We can simply assign those properties to the task view state, which is a structure and it can hold a lot of different values. And this is going to allow us to have a view state, which is representing the values that the person has entered on the screen. This will also allow us to take these values and then maybe we can use these values right over here when we are adding a task. So whenever we are adding a task, we can actually call it over here that we are taking in a view state, which is of task view state. Instead of sending in the values like, oh, here's the name and here's the age and here's assigned to and here's the title and so on. Now we're sending just one single object that we can use. And then now we can use this object to save it or whatever we want to do. Obviously, it's in view state form right now, so you will have to convert it to uh, the actual model, like the task model, and then send it to the persistent layer or across the wire, whatever you want to do. So I will also add a link to this article. It goes into a little bit more detail uh, in the same thing that we have covered with coding example, read-only pattern. And in the last, it also covers the view state to view model because if you have a view state, as I've actually shown you, you can't just take that view state and send it across the wire or persist it in the database. It has to be converted into a model, and then that model has to be sent across. Now, that model can have some logic depending on, like, if your logic is on the client side or your domain logic is on the server side. That's a different story, but uh, you, you should always use your view state to convert it to model when you are doing persistent. So for converting that, you can see that I have created a very small function over here. It's an extension on the task model. It is static function and it simply says from, you pass in the task view state and it returns you the model, all right? So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's more of an architectural video. And I hope that these patterns, you come across these patterns and then you realize that, oh, okay, we can do it maybe this way. And I hope that it uh, allows you to better structure your future applications, uh, whether it is Swift UI or Flutter or React. If you're, MV, if you're using a VVM design pattern, there is a good uh, probability that you will come across these kind of patterns. Thank you. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then go to Udemy and check out my different courses. I just released a brand new course which goes into MVVM design pattern in Swift UI. This just got released and it is an amazing course which will take you to a journey of how you can implement MVVM design pattern by Swift UI framework 
And also it goes into client server. You will implement a node server and using JavaScript. It's a lot of fun. If you are looking for a course to just get started and also learn advancements in Swift UI, then I have a separate course for you, which is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 21 hour course and it covers every possible thing you can imagine about Swift UI. This is also the best selling course. So if you are interested in these courses, check out the YouTube description and click on the link. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoyed the video.